Um, Trey, just for you, um, how difficult was it to, what was the experience like of having to go out there and play and how difficult was it on an emotional day like today? Uh, today was a very emotional day. Um, tough day for not only basketball fans, but just um, fans of, of, of Kobe, period. Um, man, it, was, it was tough going on and playing today. I uh, We were all talking after we, we heard the news, and um, some people in the locker room were asking why there's still games on today because it was – it's tough. It's tough. This is a, a tough day to play basketball for sure. Trey, uh, two questions actually. Uh, one is, do you have a favorite game that you've seen of uh, Kobe? And also, will you be dedicating the rest of your season to his memory and also his daughter since you were her favorite player? Um, <clears throat> I don't have a necessarily a favorite game. Everybody's going to say the, the 81 or the, his last game ever playing. Um, I mean, he just, there were just some moves. I remember going to OKC games and he was um, wearing number 24 later in his career and just some of the, the moves he was making. He wasn't as athletic anymore, but he was just so smart on just how, like, figuring out ways to score. Um, I mean, just figuring out ways to make plays, even though he wasn't the most athletic anymore. I mean, he, he just had gotten older, so just, Something I'll always remember about him is just as he got older, he, I mean, his mind got smarter. He, he, he learned new tricks in the game, and that's just, that's just how he was built. And, um, and of course, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna continue to play the rest of my career. I mean, for, for, for Kobe, that was my, I mean, that's one of my idols growing up. Um, me being able to, to get to know him uh, a lot more recently is, uh, is tough. It's tough. And then Gigi being on the. The hel helicopter is um, it uh, makes it even worse just because uh, man, it's it's tough. I have sisters. I have um, I mean my dad, and this I, I can only I can only imagine what that that family's feeling right now. And uh, my condolences go out to them. And I, of course, I'm gonna continue to play for that that family. Troy, you just said that he was your idol growing up, and you talked about how recently he's been able to get closer with you. How did that relationship start, and what are some of the things that you'll take away from the conversations that you guys have had recently? Yeah, so it's crazy because uh, I went I went to one of his camps when I was a kid in high school. Uh, that's where you see a lot of that, that old photo when I, was, I looked super young. Um, it was at one of his camps, and... Um, so his daughter, I mean, obviously was a big, a big fan of mine, and um, he's always trying to figure out new ways to to help his his kids learn. And uh, so he found out that I worked with, I mean, my trainer. He found out Alex Bazell, and so he he uh, got in contact with him, and Gigi started working out with Alex Bazell. Um, then that's how me and Kobe got introduced. Uh, it was through my trainer. He was talking about. I mean, how much of a fan he was in my game, um, and, and and all that. So that's how we kind of got uh, got locked in together. It's because of um, our, my trainer. Um, Trey, coach said that you guys had mama mentality on the board before the game. Um, what does mama mentality personally mean to you? Um, I mean, only a few have that um, mama mentality. Uh, it's, it's something that uh, it just it just makes you turn up to another level. Uh, that's how it resonates with me. It's just it's just a switch. It makes you turn it up, and um, having that mama mentality is something that that's something that I took from took from them. Is just um, not just me. I mean, millions and millions of kids around the world took that mentality and um, and uh, made it made it their own. And so that's something that. Uh, it's, it's even more special about Kobe. How did the decision to come out in the number eight come about, and why was that important for you to do? Yeah, if, that's something that I, I wanted to do. Um, there's a lot of things going through my mind after I heard the news, and I uh, I was just trying to think of something that I could, I mean, try and, and pay homage to to the legend, and um, 
just just make a throwback throwback number eight and uh, just wear it uh, and get that eight second violation. Can you describe what it was like to actually play in that game? And do you think that the emotions and the heaviness kind of contributed to the success you guys did have, you and your team? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I, mean, I said before we went out uh, to our team, before we ran on the court, is um, we, we get two and a half hours um, to escape reality and, and, and have fun and play, play for them and play. Um, for for that family, so we got to escape reality for a little bit, have fun, enjoy it, um, and know that we had him looking over us and just enjoy that time with each other. Uh, Trey, Dallas Mavericks owner Mark Cuban already let it be known that no one else will ever wear the number 24 again in his organization. Uh, do you think that's a stance that the NBA should take, or possibly just uniting and retiring the number 24 or the number eight? Yeah, I mean, I mean, nobody in this world would be mad if that was something that the um, NBA decided to do. I mean, if you're going to take away 24, you got to take away eight, too. Um, that's something that I know I for sure wouldn't be mad. Uh, and nobody else in this world would be either. So uh, whatever they decide to do, I know they're going to do something big for him. And um, that's, I mean, it's, it's what he deserves. After the game, what was the, the message in the field in the locker room after the win? Did anyone say anything or talk about doing things after the Yeah, uh, nobody uh, – it's, it's hard to talk. It's hard to talk, um, especially after – especially after, I mean, a day like this. Nobody really said too much. Um, uh, a lot of the guys – some of the guys spoke before um, before the, the game in our team meeting, but uh, – Nah, nobody really uh, talked too much after, and um, it was more about, I mean, just just getting getting ready to go. So, uh, yeah, no one really talked too much after. Congratulations on the win, Trey. Thank you. Do, would you mind kind of talking about um, the last conversation that you had with Kobe and maybe even, you know, if not just – some of the conversations that, you know, some of the wisdom and whatnot that you kind of soaked up from him and what he shared with you. Yeah, so uh, one of the last conversations we had, um, man, he was just, just telling me how much uh, how much he's, he's seen my, my game progress. Um, Man, just been happy for me. Man, just saying how, how proud he was of me and how um, how he wants me to continue to be a, a role model for for kids growing up and um, just for for Gigi and and uh, all the kids looking up to me just to continue to inspire these kids and. Um, and continue to play my heart out. And uh, that was, that's one of the last things he said to me. Trey, was that, was that recently or in the last year or so? Or what would you say? It was recently. Recently, okay. And, and your interactions with Gigi, have you, have you spoken with her any time in the last? No, nah, I talked to Gigi during our, um, after our games. Um, got to speak with her after, after uh, the, the two games that she came to. What were, what, what were the emotions like when you made that half court heave? And I saw you point up to the sky. And yeah, that's, man, that's, it's crazy. I mean, I said Kobe was with me. Um, I mean, there's some stats that tonight is is crazy. People were telling me in the back some of the numbers that that add up. Um, that I mean, I think I took 24 shots. Uh, I think I shot 81 percent from the free throw line. Uh, man, this, this is from other stats in the in the bat that they told me that I was like, man, Kobe was Kobe was with me tonight. Um, when you think of what Kobe meant to the game and just sport overall, um, what what comes to mind? You know, it's crazy because like there's there's so much that that Kobe has done um, in the game. Uh, so many kids he's inspired. Uh, in the game of basketball, but it's like it's it's more. He's more than just that. I mean, there's 
Kobe, the, the basketball player, of course, but there's Kobe, the, the author. Um, there's Kobe, the, the dad. There's Kobe, the, the businessman. Like, he's, he's reached so many people and touched so many people in this world that it's, it's not just basketball. That's why it's, that's why it's a tough day, um, not only for basketball fans, but just people in general. Um, because there's a lot more people that are fans of him for other reasons too. So that's that's why it's such a, a tough day. When um, when you met up with or when Gigi and you met up after games, I think she had come to two two mm -hmm. of uh, your games this season. Um, did she tell you? Did she have anything to tell you? I mean, I, I know she looked up to you yeah. a lot. Yeah, no, she just she told me how much she loved watching me play. Um, she was a big fan of mine, and uh, yeah, she she works out with my trainer Alex uh, all the time, and. Um, yeah, so she just she just loved how I played and all that. So yeah, I, I, that's what she told me. We saw before the game a very emotional moment with you and your mom and the embrace that you had. Mm -hmm. um, did you say? Did she say anything to you before you went into the locker room? And how did you use that to go into the game? Yeah, yeah, she just she just told me to play, um, play my heart out, and that um, I mean he's always going to be watching over me, um, pulling for me, and um, just to go out there and play play for him and uh, just play my heart out and that's what I, I, I did tonight. Appreciate it.